With Downpour being such a large and ambitious project, there is a bunch of details and secrets put into the DLC, which is what I will be talking about in this video. Here is your spoiler warning, go play Downpour if you haven't. Some of these entries definitely vary in obscurity, so you might know a few. Before we get into the entries, I do want to mention that I'm not going to talk about the Inv campaign, since I've already covered it in another video. And I will not cover the Heartbreak Easter Egg in Rubicon, since other people have put in the work to solve it, and also I've never played Fez. There is a link in the description to a video that actually explains it correctly, so watch that if you're interested. Slug Pups are kind of secrets in themselves, but did you know they have liked and disliked foods? This is seemingly random and doesn't actually affect the game, but the Slug Pup will have a visible reaction to if it likes or dislikes a food. For example, this one loves eating neuron flies. It will grow up to do great things! <laughs> You can see it do a little hop around to show that it likes eating the neuron fly. Its disliked food is the dandelion peach, and its body language shows it wincing after eating it. Some of the new fret music in the game changes based on different conditions, such as day and night. The obvious example is Metropolis, having completely different instruments played during night and day, resulting in two different threat tracks. but there is also Outer Expanse, which has three variations of the threat theme. This is the base of the threat track. All of the variations include these instruments. The first variation is Jungle Day. The second variation is Jungle Night. The third variation is Sunken Pier. Sunken Pier doesn't have a nighttime variation, as the rain is lethal there. The new gutter subregion of Chimney Canopy also has a unique threat variation. Here is the normal threat. Here is the gutter threat. The addition of albino leviathans and jetfish to subterranean has always been an interesting detail in the base game. But did you know there's now albino vultures added to downpour? <laughs> These bad birds have a 1 in a thousand chance of replacing normal vultures, or king vultures. I managed to encounter one by accident in sandbox. The wings of the albino vulture also shift in colour, which makes them look pretty cool. Now a lesser known fact about the albino vulture is that if you go to submerged superstructure, or more specifically, Bitter Irie, a survivor, monk, gourmand or hunter, there is a guaranteed chance of an albino spawning. Did you know that Saint's Ascension Beam has mildly interesting interactions with certain objects? I found that you can use it to pop popcorn plants and eat the food inside. You can also use it to bully the void spawn, which is mildly entertaining. It's interesting that they're not really impacted by this, and it might mean that Saint's powers have zero effect on Void beings, as Void Worms are seemingly unaffected too. At the start of Artificer's campaign, the Citizen ID drone called Sothanthiel binds to it. Obviously this is common knowledge, but did you know there is scavenger graffiti depicting the drone outside the room it is obtained? The decal suggests the scavengers have seen it in its active form, and not the Nokia flip phone look it is initially seen with. Why it chose to bind to Artificer and how it became deactivated is a mystery. Drop your best theories in the comments below. This secret is small, but did you know there is a secret passage added to Shaded Citadel? A secret passage has been added to the Pearl Room in Shaded. Although it's filled with spiders, it leads to the flooded section before memory crypts, which makes it a nice shortcut through Shaded. 
In Metropolis, Pebbles' overseers broadcast advertisements. Some show fresh crepes or news stories, but the interesting ones are the Pepsi commercials. This drink was seemingly popular with the Metropolis population, and even had commercials featuring Pebbles himself. The Pepsi logo looks allegedly similar to a real-life cola drink logo, but instead with an X design, which references the Max Karma symbol, which is pretty clever. Hopefully the Pepsi logo isn't a case of copyright infringement. The adverts also reference Animal Men, which was a conceptual idea Video Cult worked on after Rainworld. The vision for it was a PS1 3D styled game. It is set in a decaying mall with sci fi and hyper capitalistic themes. It also has a fairly big soundtrack, which is on Bandcamp, which I'll link in the description. It also has more details on the project as well. A fun little detail is that if you feed a Leviathan a mass refraction cell, the cell detonates due to the Leviathan's jaws, causing a singularity explosion. Did you know that gooey ducks, or the alleged nut item, actually repels worm grass temporarily? Which can be helpful in farm rays and outer expanse, but in my testing I found the effect was pretty weak and didn't really help much. If Saint gets to submerge superstructure, it has an exclusive passage leading to Bitter Airy. There is also a secret echo located at the communication tower. The echo is impressed with Saint's ability to find it. Outer Expanse represents the world beyond Pebbles and Moon. Due to this, there's tons of different overseers. Pebbles' blue overseer is the most common variant, followed by Moon's yellow ones. No significant harassments, green overseers are rarely spotted as well. Even harder to find are Seven Red Suns' red overseers, or whatever colour they are. Obviously, these are all found elsewhere in the game, but there is a chance to encounter overseers that have never been seen before. You can find a purple and grey overseer here. Who these belong to is unconfirmed, but we can do a bit of speculation. Overseers usually stick around their iterators facility, and iterators are sorted into local groups, likely based on their proximity to one another. Outer Expanse is part of Five Pebbles and looks for the moon's local group. The local group has three other members, who are no significant harassment, chasing wind and unparalleled innocence. We already know that the Green Overseer belongs to no significant harassment, but what about Chasing Wind? Well, they are also referred to as Grey Wind, which is fittingly one of the colours of the Overseers. The purple one might belong to Unparalleled Innocence. For some reason, even before the Overseers were added, I had a headcanon that Unparalleled Innocence was purple, so... <laughs> I mean, win for me. <laughs> Maybe. Even though Seven Red Suns is never referred to as a local iterator, they likely gave their Overseers orders to follow Spearmaster through Five Pebbles' facilities. The Red Overseers located in Outer Expanse are likely there to check up on Pebbles, or leftover support from the Spearmaster delivery mission. All Seven Red Suns is in the local group, or at least neighbouring the local group. Another interesting detail that I've heard no one mention is that if Gourmand procures an Overseer Eye from its stomach, it will always be grey in colour. This means Gourmand has swallowed a large quantity of grey Overseer Eyes in the past, and since grey Overseers are very rare in Outer Expanse, Gourmand might have obtained them from lands beyond. Gourmand is a scout for the Slugcat tribe. It wouldn't be too unlikely that Gourmand entered another iterator's facility grounds. This facility ground could belong to Chasing Wind, as the Grey Overseers likely belong to them, and they're local to Outer Expanse. Obviously this is all unconfirmed and based on a single colour, so don't take it at face value, but it is cool to think about the Gourmand prequel. Alright, that's all the secrets and details I could put in this video. But Balagaga, you didn't talk about the Moon Siren or Hunter Longlegs. Aren't those secrets and details? Well, beloved commenter, this is probably going to be a series like the Modded Workshop one, so anything I don't cover might be in the next instalment. This way I can get round to covering every single secret in this game, at least theoretically. So if you have any details or secrets you want covered, drop them in the description below and I'll check them out. One more thing before I end the video is I have a bounty board of secrets and details. These are entries that I didn't have enough information on to include in the video. Firstly, we have the mushroom threat theme. Although this is cut from any threat tracks in the game, supposedly you can mod it in yourself. I did try this, and failed, so that's why it's not in the video. But if anyone actually gets it working, please let me know. Using dev tools, light sources can be configured to turn on at night. Now obviously you can just place one yourself and set it to turn on at night, but I want to know if there is any natural occurrence of this happening in-game. Through my search, I couldn't find a single one. So if anyone finds a room with lights that can turn naturally on at night, please drop the room code and I'll check it out. Alright, that's it for this video. See you guys next time.